Hi everybody, Mike Brown here again. Welcome back again to Educator.com's Adobe Photoshop Elements course. In the two previous lessons, we've discussed preparing your images for output by image size, canvas size, adjusting the resolution, knocking the images down and reducing them for web or getting them in the right um, resolution and sizing for going out to print the two different ones. In the last lesson, we looked at the file formats available for saving. And in this lesson, the final part of the trio is actually saving your images. We're going to talk about save, save as, and save for web, the three ways of saving. Under the file menu, save, command or control on a PC, the letter S, save as, or save for web. When you first open an image, and this one has only been opened and untouched. Notice at the end of the title, there is nothing there. But this one has an asterisk, and so does this one. Whenever you see an asterisk, that means something has been done to the file. As simple as just highlighting a different layer, something, anything you do that's different, will cause this to have an asterisk to remind you that something has been done and you should save the file, just in case you forget. Now, if you don't do anything to your file, or the very first time you save it after you do something to the file, we'll change this, and let me make an adjustment change, do a little levels, just for fun, and turn it off. Now we've made a change. If we want to do the traditional, what you think would be the right way to save, go Command or Control S. Notice it saved without asking me. It just saved the image. Now, if I had done something drastic to that image, like flattening it, let's say, or changing the image size down for the web to 72 at, let's say, 900, 1.5 megs. Now we have a very small file with no um, layers. It's just for the web only. If I was to, and I'm not going to do it, if I was to do save or command S, it's going to save over that original file. And it's going to wipe out the big file that you've worked on. For example, here's one here. Look at all the layers in this. There's hours of work to get this particular image worked the way it is. If I turned it into the small JPEG and just went Command or Control S, I would overwrite that other image. You have to be terribly careful when you do that. So instead of using Command S or Control S ever, I don't even use it at all. I always go to File, Save As, and this is what will happen. Up comes a dialog box, and notice it automatically put a little bit extra at the end of it that's different from the original one. 2497, where is that? There it is. Notice the name is 2497 HDR Blend 1. It added this part. And then if I did it again, it would be edited too. So by using the Save As dialog box, it prevents you from saving over. And sometimes it may actually come in with the same name the first time you would do it. And even though it doesn't change the name, you are reminded by the fact that this box is here Oh, yeah, I worked on that image, and I don't want to save it over itself, so maybe I'll call it 1A instead, and then I can save it. And we'll go back to the open box, and we go to the desktop, and there is our original image. Oh, this was the wrong one, 2497. There's the 86 megabyte file, and there's that little tiny file. Two different images. You want to make a habit of being careful about saving 
over your images, especially if you're sizing them down for the web. One other thing that can happen, um, Photoshop Elements can crash. It's been known to happen. It's happened to me. It happened this morning when I was preparing this lesson.